Hi, my name is Doug Beardsley. I'm Director of Engineering at Cadena. Today I would like to talk to you about how Cadena has solved the blockchain trilemma and successfully scaled Sorry. proof of work. Roughly speaking, all single chain proof of work blockchains have the same performance. They have the same fundamental physical limitations the speed of light, network bandwidth, transaction execution time. These are the same no matter who you are, no matter what project you are, everybody is bound by them. In the case of Bitcoin, one blockchain has gotten us approximately five transactions per second. Roughly speaking, this is a fine number. Some maybe get 10, some maybe get 15. I'm going to use the number five in these slides because it's a conservative number that everyone uh, uh, agrees upon. Now, Cadena can scale with what I call a multi-core blockchain. And what we do is we use multiple chains, just like computers use multiple cores to allow you to process faster. So if we have one chain and it can do five transactions per second, with two chains, we should be able to do 10. With five chains, we should be able to do 25. 10 chains, 50, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this naive approach has two challenges. First of all, if you have 10 separate blockchains, that's 10 separate currencies. And that's going to be cumbersome to work with. And secondly, a 51% attack becomes a 5.1% attack because you can attack one chain and all you need is half of the hash power of that chain. And that's an unacceptable uh, problem there. But there is a solution. Braid the chains together. Here's what it might look like with two chains. Each block includes an additional hash of the previous block on the other chain, in addition to the normal blockchain of the previous block on the same chain. It turns out that this solves the 5.1% attack problem. If you wait one block after your transaction, you will have to have the full hash power of the whole network um, securing that block, and it will be a full 51% attack. So you won't have this 5.1 this problem. And the hash braiding also lets us do trustless cross-chain transfers, yielding a single currency across both chains. The way you transfer across chains is you burn on one chain, you submit the proof of that burn, and create the coins on the other chain. So we can do it with two, but that's not enough to scale to significant loads. So how do we scale up further? Well, if we collapse the previous diagram and only look at one layer, the chains are connected as we see here. Each chain is connected to the other chain. If we were going to connect 10 chains, there are a lot of different ways we could do it. This graph that you see here is one potential approach. And it gives us one hop to get to the farthest away chain. That's good because it gives you the fastest possible cross-chain operations but it requires nine extra hashes to be stored in every block. That's too much space, and it gets way worse if you need to get to larger numbers of chains. So this won't quite work. Well, we could use a simpler diagram, but this has problems as well. This takes five hops to get to the farthest chain, and if we scaled up to 100 chains, it would be 50 blocks, and that's too long. It is good on the space, though, because there's only two extra hashes per block, and it doesn't get worse as you scale. But it's still not good enough either. So the, the thing that saves the day here is something called graph theory. It's an obscure branch of math, and they have been studying the degree diameter problem for decades, and it is exactly what we need to solve this. Here is what it looks like to connect 10 chains together using a graph theory solution. This graph, if you look at it closely, it gives you two hops to the farthest chain. No two nodes are ever more than two hops away from each other. 
and it only requires three extra hashes per block. So this is reasonable space requirements. So this is, this is a good solution, and um, when we launched our network, we started out with this 10-chain graph. But you need to scale up further. Here's what it looks like with 20 chains. The only difference between this and the previous one is that it's three hops to the farthest chain. We still stay with the same three hashes extra per block. So we have reasonable space requirements and fast cross-chain operations. But what about more than 20 chains? This is where the graph theory solutions to the degree diameter problem come into play. This table sh shows a summary of the best solutions. And uh, if we have five hashes and five hops, we can get hundreds of chains. Six hashes and six hops gets us up to thousands of chains. Seven gets tens of thousands. And eight hashes and eight hops gets us hundreds of thousands of chains. This is more than enough to handle global transaction loads. The architecture of this network is no longer a limiting factor to scalability. So, I can hear people ask, when will this be ready? Cadena has already launched. We launched this network a little over two years ago in October 2019. And we launched with a 10 chain network. In January of 2020, we had full smart contract support go into effect. And then in August of 2020, we uh, doubled our network capacity to 20 chains while we were running in production. So what does scaling get us? It gets us low gas fees. It's well understood and agreed upon that high gas fees happen because we can't scale. High gas fees harm the industry more than we think. I want to hit three examples of how this harms the industry. The first is Constitution DAO. Just recently, a DAO had a, uh, a crowdsourced effort to buy the Constitution from Sotheby's. Uh, they, they raised like over $40 million. The median donation was $217, but it cost $50 to $90 in fees for everyone who donated. And that really takes a huge chunk out of your donation. They failed to buy it. Someone else outbid them. And then if you wanted to get your money out, you had to pay those $50 to $90 fees again. And that just completely wiped some people out. Secondly, minor extractable value. These are the current Uniswap V2 fees as of yesterday. $332 to supply liquidity and $137 to swap. If Alice submits a trade, someone can see that trade and pay a miner to put another transaction in and profit from it. That's what we call minor extractable value or MEV. Alice doesn't want to cancel the trade because it's so expensive. She would just be throwing that money away. Low fees allow Alice to cancel those trades or, or construct trades that will cancel automatically if a front runner moves the price. And this dramatically reduces the profitability of MEV. So it's a really significant impact. And then finally, with high gas fees, we just have a smaller addressable market. You'll never be able to buy coffee with cryptocurrency. You won't be able to do small in-game NFT purchases. Um, Minting it excludes many artists when the fees are high, and it hurts adoption. Layer twos are put out there as a scaling solution, but they don't actually solve the problem completely. You still have to pay fees to move things back to the layer one if you want to get, get your coins into another dApp. And uh, other layer two solutions like the Lightning Network sacrifice decentralization and what you have with the whole infrastructure of on-chain layer one blockchains. Layer two has a place, but it is not a substitute for layer one scaling. In conclusion, Kadena is a scalable layer one blockchain. It started in 2019. We doubled capacity in 2020. You can use it today and be liberated from high gas fees. Thank you very much. Build a scalable right future on Kadena. Doug, thank you, Doug.